we are discussing about biodiversity and conservation chapter and yesterday before yesterday we have studied about the loss of biodiversity topic okay there are four reasons which we call them evil quartet evil quartet and those four reasons which are responsible for the loss of biodiversity we have studied they are habitat loss habitat loss or fragmentation fragmentation second one alien species invasion alien species invasion next over exploitation over exploitation and last one co extinction co extinction okay. so these all four reasons together called evil quartet evil quartet for the loss of biodiversity for the loss of biodiversity is a four reasons okay so if we go through uh, this we will revise what are we discussed okay this was memory purpose okay habitat loss fragmentation for example amazon rainforest in amazon rainforest what happened um, many people have deforestation uh, they perform deforestation and uh, using those lands uh, and converted it, converted into grasslands and also performing uh, uh, cattle feeding so different uh, other purposes they have used that particular forest okay amazon rain forest okay cultivations also so all illegal okay so that leads to habitat loss fragmentation okay and uh, coming to alien species invasion i have already told you okay tickle uh, fishes are uh, become extinct okay uh, because of the nine perch introduction into the lake victoria okay that is one example and uh, any any forest which is if they are introducing into okay particular uh, habitat or particular uh, geographical region there the native species may get uh, okay uh, disturbed and they may get uh, extinct from that area that is we, we have studied under alien species invasion alien species invasion even uh, the plants like the uh, parthenium lantana and icornia some other plant examples that we also study discussed okay under alien species invasion and uh, coming to over exploitation over exploitation means excessive utilization okay excessive utilization then required leads to uh, loss of uh, biodiversity only loss of that particular species extinction okay for example uh, many species and even uh, we, that we have studied in the previous classes uh, like uh, uh, passenger pigeons passenger pigeons and also uh, stella sea cow that we have studied uh, previously for uh, extinct species examples all can consider uh, okay uh, over exploitation excess of hunting bali javan caspian tigers okay excess of hunting Uh, leads to that uh, okay loss of uh, biodiversity so over exploitation coming to co-extinction co-extinction means if a parasite if a host is going to be extinct the parasite also going to be extinct okay for example in mutual nests in mutual in the also if uh, a, an organism like a plant a flower okay flowering plant is get extinct the insect which is depending on that plant also will be extinct so that is nothing but co extinction okay co extinction in two cases can happen in case of host and parasite in case of mutualism okay in case of mutualism also the co extinction is possible okay so these are the four reasons for the loss of biodiversity four reasons for the loss of biodiversity today we are going to study about the conservation of biodiversity conservation of biodiversity
conservation of biodiversity. What is the meaning of conservation such previous study? So what is the meaning of conservation? Okay. So conservation is nothing but uh, protecting the environment. Protecting the environment. Okay. Okay. Suppose if you believe we are we are using uh, one pen okay to write we have only one refill okay the ink is getting finished and we don't have any other source to buy that is the only refill we have to use for more time okay so what we will do in this time we avoid using excessive okay like unnecessary writing we are not going to do that okay if you are going to write unnecessary things the ink will be finished and necessary, right? So this is what conservation means. When we have a very limited resources, when we have a very limited resources, we are going to use them in a brilliant way so that these resources will stay for us for a long time. Okay, so this is nothing but a conservation. This is nothing but conservation. So now, uh, first we are going to study what are the reasons to conserve, okay? There are particular reasons to conserve biodiversity. So those reasons we are going to study first, okay? So there are three reasons for the conservation of uh, biodiversity. There are three reasons, okay? Reasons for conservation of biodiversity reasons for conservation of biodiversity first okay first reason narrow utilitarian arguments narrow utilitarian Arguments, narrow utilitarian arguments. Second one, broad utilitarian arguments. Utilitarian arguments. Broad utilitarian arguments. And third type, ethical arguments. Ethical arguments. Ethical arguments. Sir, your video is little blur. Blurring, yeah, network problem, I think. I have this network problem. I think now it is visible. No, sir. Not visible. Video is not at all visible. It's visible, sir, but it's slightly blur. blur. The board is blur. Problem. Okay, I have, I am facing little bit network problem, so that's fine. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. So coming to narrow utilitarian arguments and broad utilitarian arguments and the third one, ethical arguments. There are three reasons to conserve biodiversity. Okay, so we have to conserve biodiversity. So we should have some reasons. So what are those reasons? And they will know. Okay. So coming to the first one, narrow utilitarian arguments, narrow utilitarian arguments we use forest for wood firewood reason uh, reason carefully we use forest we get the uh, source of these kind of sources from the forest number one wood 
I'll write here. Wood. Okay. Next. Firewood. Firewood. Okay. Next. Fiber. Fiber. Next. Construction material. Construction material. Okay. Construction material. And also many industrial products. Industrial raw materials. Industrial raw materials. Okay. And also medicines. Okay. Wood, firewood, fiber, construction material, industrial raw materials, and finally medicinal products. So these all are the different uses but from the forest itself. Okay, from the forest we will get all these things. So this comes under narrow utilization argument, the narrow utilization arguments or narrow utilitarian arguments. That means in a narrow way. If we think in a narrow way, according to human beings only, okay, that's why it is narrow. Right? Only for ourselves we are thinking. See, human beings only needs wood, firewood, fiber, construction material, industrial raw material. Well, it's only human beings needed, especially, okay? Medicines you take exceptional cases, but animals also it can be used. But the medicines, first of all, needed by human beings, okay? So these are the sources from the forest that we are going to get, okay? So coming to, this is called narrow utilization argument. Coming to broad utilitarian arguments, like broad utilization, if you think, uh, Beyond human beings, okay? Beyond human being conscience, if you are going to think, for the nature, if you are going to think, okay? Broad utilitarian arguments. Amazon rainforest. Amazon rainforest. One example we are taking, okay? Why it is uh, called lungs of earth? Lungs of earth. Because 20% oxygen is given to earth, right? So that's why it's called lungs of the earth. Okay, the Amazon rainforest is called lungs of the earth. Why? Because it's giving 20% of the oxygen to the earth. And this is broad thinking only, not narrow thinking. This is not narrow thinking, right? This is broad thinking, okay? Broad utilitarian arguments, okay? And also, apart from that, the forests are the chief sources for ecological imbalance, ecological balance, okay? The ecology, ecological balance is existing because of the forest only, number one. And number two, pollination, fertilization, uh, pollination followed by fertilization in the plants. That leads to new plants growth, right? So this is all broad thinking, not narrow thinking. We are thinking beyond our human beings' uh, utilization, okay? That comes from the broad utilization. Okay, so this is all right. Coming to ethical arguments. Ethical arguments uh, includes what is the meaning of ethics generally? Ethics means values. Ethics means values. Okay, ethics values. So we we respect the nature and. Uh, our ancient people also, our ancestors, uh, other ancient people also, they prey all plants and animals, especially the plants they treated as the goddesses, plants, okay? Even the sun, uh, sun they treat as a god, because that is cheap energy source, right? So this comes under ethical argument, okay? Lot of intrinsic value, every environmental uh, component is having its own intrinsic value and because of that intrinsic value we should not damage we have to develop that ethical feeling to not to damage the environment so this comes under ethical arguments okay so these are all reasons together for the conservation of biodiversity so we have to conserve the biodiversity and these are the three reasons for the conservation of biodiversity and the first reason is narrow utilitarian arguments. The first reason is narrow utilitarian arguments. So what are narrow utilitarian arguments? We get fire, firewood, 
okay fibers fibers also right and construction material engineering raw materials i'm talking about okay industrial engineering raw materials okay and the coming to medicines we extract medicines from different medicinal plants no? so these all are raw materials that we needed the human beings uh, needed these raw materials so we are thinking about only our human beings so this comes under narrow utilitarian arguments okay hope you understood next broad utilitarian arguments broad utilitarian arguments beyond the human beings we have to think like about the environment we have to think okay broad utilitarian suppose amazon rainforest is giving 20 percent of oxygen to the entire earth this is broad thinking not narrow thinking we are not thinking about ourselves we are also thinking about our nature surroundings that is comes under broad utilitarian arguments also apart from uh, the that particular amazon rainforest point i'm talking about all forests the all forests are the sources of pollination and uh, followed by fertilization and then by new producers growth and fertility of the soils right proper rainfall and temperature and ecological balance everything is maintained by the forests and the plants and the animals present in the forests okay so that thinking is nothing but broad thinking okay broad utilitarian arguments and coming to ethical arguments means every component of the environment has its own intrinsic value and protecting the each component of environment it comes under ethical reason okay we have some values our ancestors our ancestors our ancient people used to respect those natural resources like sun and plants okay they used to pray them as god and goddesses respectively okay so uh, there is some ethical arguments are uh, lying there okay so these are the reasons for the conservation of biodiversity now we are going to study about the conservation methods now we are going to study about the conservation methods okay conservation methods we are going to study now so the first type of for conservation that is in situ conservation in situ conservation Second type, ex situ conservation. In situ conservation, ex situ conservation. Everyone, everyone. In situ and ex situ conservation. We yeah? are studying now. Okay. So coming to in situ conservation and ex situ conservation difference, we will study first. The difference is very simple. The difference is very simple suppose you go to forest okay there are certain uh, you identify some particular species are under threat okay in that forest only you are taking care of that particular species so that they you are conserving them in their habitat itself okay you are going to their habitat in their habitat only you are protecting them okay that comes under inside your conservation suppose excite your conservation means you are going to their habitat you are going to some certain forest and you are identifying the species which is under threat of extinction okay you are bringing that out from their natural habitat and in any other source external source you are giving them protection that is ex situ conservation okay so conservation of natural resources within their natural habitat is called in situ conservation and the conservation of natural resources bringing from their habitat natural habitat native habitat and the protecting outside that is come, comes under ex situ conservation okay so i think you understood the difference between in situ and ex situ conservation okay now we are going to study in situ conservation examples in situ conservation examples we are going to study okay so first that means the of i told this you know what is the dog? 
Sir, can you explain it once again? Okay, once again I have explained it. In situ conservation, the conservation of the conservation of the natural resources within their habitat that is called in situ conservation. And the conservation of natural resources by bringing away from their natural habitat in separate conditions, okay, outside of their natural habitat, that is exciting conservation. Conservation of natural resources within their natural habitat is called inside to conservation, okay. Conserving, conservation of plants or animals in their natural habitat okay and conservation of plants or animals outside of their natural habitat outside of their natural habitat okay so here i written the difference okay till now orally i have explained now we are going to study some examples okay so those examples are for inside conservation, I'll tell you first. Okay. Examples. National parks. National parks. Sanctuaries. Sanctuaries. Biosphere, biosphere reserves. Biosphere reserves. Okay. Next, number four. After biosphere reserves, cultural landscapes. Cultural landscapes cultural landscapes cultural landscapes okay so these all are these all are examples of examples of inside the conservation okay so national parks sanctuaries biosphere reserves and cultural landscapes cultural landscapes Okay, so these all are examples of inside your conservation, inside your conservation. And by coming to exciting conservation examples, I'm going to write now. Okay, exciting conservation examples also I'm going to write. And about each and every uh, type we will discuss in detail further. Okay, about each and everything we will discuss further. Okay, exciting conservation. outside of their habitat examples okay. genetic banks or gene banks okay genetic bank for gene banks right gene banks and uh, geological parks botanical gardens okay geological parks Botanical gardens, botanical gardens, botanical gardens, and also cryo preservation, cryo preservation, so cryo preservation means a uh, liquid nitrogen, you studied in second chapter. Like the uh, storage of pollen grains can be done in cryo preservation, liquid nitrogenic uh, 96 uh, something, okay. Yeah, negative minus 96 or what, okay. That is cryo preservation, very cold temperature, extremely cold cryo, extremely cold cryo, okay. And 
okay you are using nitrogen in their liquid form liquid nitrogen okay and performing preservation that is cryo preservation okay of natural resources so these all are examples of ex situ conservation gene banks you are bringing the gene sequences or particular genes from the organisms and storing in the gene banks okay that is called gene banks its geological parts we know botanical gardens we know right and cryo preservations okay and the economy coming to in situ conservation national parks sanctuaries biosphere reserves and cultural landscapes national parks sanctuaries biosphere reserves and cultural landscapes some of the examples okay now we are going to study in detail that about all these examples we are going to study in detail I think everyone has noted down the difference between ex situ and in situ conservation and examples. So first, national parks. national parks okay so i'll tell you very simple this national parks are very strictly strictly reserved okay strictly reserved for the wildlife strictly reserved for the wildlife okay strictly reserved for wildlife any kind of uh, hunting or killing the animals or doing cutting the trees will not be accepted won't be accepted one second okay now so coming to this uh, national parks okay in this national parks any kind of uh, illegal activities are not at all allowed any kind of uh, illegal activities are not allowed like uh, uh, grazing okay hunting poaching okay poaching or hunting like killing the animals is not at all allowed okay even private ownership also not allowed only it comes under the particular ministry okay wildlife related forest ministry okay we have an example in our bangalore itself that is banerghata national park banerghata national park and other examples like uh, uh, eravikulam national park in kerala eravikulam national park in kerala eravikulam national park Eravikulam National Park, Kerala. Okay, so it is strictly reserved for the wildlife. So this wildlife includes animals, plants, both, both. Okay, wildlife. Wildlife means not only animals, sir. Like tiger, sir. Every animal comes under the forest that comes under wildlife only. Even if it is a small. Monkey, small insect also, which belongs to the forest, which comes under wildlife. Okay, so all animals and plants present in the forest, okay, will be considered as uh, wildlife, and that national parks, okay, or the kind of uh, in situ conservation. Okay, so coming to the second type, sanctuary. So sanctuaries are. Uh, same like national parks only but exclusively as uh, a protection given to animals only okay so exclusively exclusively animals are protected exclusively animals are protected that means it doesn't mean that uh, uh, the collection of the timber and uh, for uh, killing of trees okay deforestation is not allowed okay even though 
it's a sanctuary exclusively for animal protection it doesn't mean that the the deforestation is allowed okay right deforestation is not at all allowed it is strictly prohibited in every kind of insect or exercise okay and now whereas the example if you take the periyar wildlife sanctuary periyar wildlife sanctuary Periyar Wildlife Sanctuary is one example. Periyar Wildlife Sanctuary is an example of uh, sanctuaries. Okay, so where a uh, lot of elephants, elephants are protected. Okay, Periyar Wildlife Sanctuary. Okay, elephants, tigers, okay, also being protected. Okay, so these all are uh, examples of sanctuaries. Now coming to biosphere reserves. Biosphere. Uh, you may get a question where is this periyar wildlife sanctuary it is also in kerala only okay kerala god's own country next number three biosphere reserve biosphere reserves so coming to this biosphere reserves area of land area of land or particular uh, coastal ecosystem okay a particular area of land okay a particular area of land where that particular wildlife plants and animals all are being protected okay that is comes under biosphere reserves in this biosphere reserves, no any kind of uh, killing plants and animals, nothing is allowed. Okay, so that is called biosphere reserves. Okay, in our uh, Karnataka itself, you can find biosphere reserves in the area of Chikmagalur, Hassan, and Mangalur districts. You can find some biosphere reserves. Okay, those particular areas, especially in the Chikmagalur, you will find a lot of biosphere reserves. But uh, these plants and animals in that uh, area should not be should not be attacked or disturbed. Okay, so they are called biosphere reserves. That means biosphere means all ecosystems, all animals, plants, or it completely in uh, coordinated uh, okay manner. So that is called biosphere, right? Okay, we know organism, species, community. Ecosystem biosphere that means in the biosphere different ecosystems will be present. Okay, it may be uh, terrestrial or it may be aquatic, also can be included in this biosphere reserves. Okay, that's what. Okay, so this is all about inside the conservation uh, examples, <clears throat> and uh, we are going to study one more uh, inside the conservation that is sacred groups, sacred groups. These are very special. In inside conservation only, sacred. Right? What is the meaning of sacred? Sacred means very pure. Okay, very pure and instilled with a lot of values, ethical values. Okay, and uh, uh, belonging to our ancestors. And many tribals are present. So this comes under uh, sacred groups. Okay, they are also called sacred forests. Okay, sacred forests, sacred forests, sacred groups are also called sacred forests. Okay, so in this uh, in these areas, and that is the importance of the sacred groups. Okay, the government of India. And Ministry of Forests has given all the rights to that particular tribes living in that area. Okay, the all, all kind of rights given to the people living in that particular area. Ashish Goda, I am removing you. Okay, thank you.
sacred groups are nothing but sacred forests. Okay, in that sacred forest, all the rights like uh, uh, they they can even attack the people who ever wants to perform the cutting of trees and uh, hunting of animals. Okay, so they can do that. The sacred forest. Okay, it is uh, having that. Okay, rights to the local people, local tribals. Okay, for examples, examples of so, uh, sacred uh, groups, examples of sacred forests, examples. Kasi and Jaintia Hills. Kasi and Jaintia Hills. Kasi and Jaintia Hills. Meghalaya, Meghalaya. Next, number two, Aravalli Hills, Aravalli Hills, Rajasthan, Aravalli Hills, Rajasthan. Next, Western Guards. I need not to tell a particular state. We know where. Western Ghats are present. Okay, it covers the coastal region of Karnataka and uh, Maharashtra. Okay, Western Ghats. Next, Sarguja, Sarguja, and Chenda, Chenda, and Bastar, Bastar. Okay, Bastar. These all three. Area is Madhya Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh. Okay. So these all are sacred groups, sacred groups. Kashmir, right? Jaintia Hills, Meghalaya, and uh, Aravalli Hills, uh, Rajasthan, Western Ghats, Karnataka, and Maharashtra, Karnataka and Maharashtra, and Sarguja Chanda Buster of Madhya Pradesh. So these all are. Examples of sacred groups. Sacred groups. Sacred groups are also called sacred forests. Sacred means uh, in Canada and Telugu we call it as Pavitra Maina. Okay, Pavitra Wadi. Okay, that is sacred. Okay, and whereas the local tribals have given all the rights okay, to protect, to conserve, even government also helping them and protecting them. The any kind of private ownership is not allowed. Okay, so these all are. Sacred groups comes under incentive conservation only again. Comes under incentive conservation only. Okay, there is nothing to nothing much to discuss about uh, incentive conservation. Incentive conservation examples only each and every one we have to study. And incentive conservation also I'll explain it in a simple way. Okay, I think you have written everything. I already explained about the uh, incentive conservation. Gene banks, cryo preservation, we have to remember much. Gene banks means we have to get, uh, first we have to identify which species are under extinction. Okay, we have identified. From that uh, endangered species, genes we have to extract and we are conserving it, preserving it. Okay, that is one example. Next, cryo preservation. You have you have already knowledge about cryo preservation. Cryo means ultimately cold, extremely cold condition like the liquid nitrogen. Okay, by using liquid nitrogen, we have studied in second chapter that pollen grains can be preserved. Okay, so we know that. So that is about that. Okay, extensive preservation, geological parks and botanical gardens. You know already. I need not to explain that. Okay, so when it comes to uh, one more important point that is. You observe there are uh, three hotspots, okay, biogeo, okay, hotspots in India. There are three hotspots in India. Uh, they are nothing but Western Ghats and Sri Lanka, Indo Burma, and Himalaya. Okay, three hotspots in India. Okay, in India. So those three, which Covers India, okay, which covers India. Western Ghats, okay, and number two, okay. 
Indo Burman regions of Himalaya, Indo Burman regions of Himalayas. Okay. Next. Remaining part of uh, Himalayas. Okay. Indo Burman regions itself uh, we can consider. Okay. That also a hotspot. And separately, Himalayas are the hotspots. Okay. Western Ghats, Indo Burman borders. Okay. Borders and Himalayas. Okay. These are the three hotspots which covers the India, which covers the India. Okay. That covers India. These are the three hotspots which covers India. Okay. So, hope you are understood. Now, coming to the international efforts. Okay, internationally, what kind of efforts have been taken? Okay, am I ready? International efforts. Okay, first, Earth Summit. Earth Summit. Earth summit will happen uh, in the year of uh, 1992. In the year of 1992, in the location called Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro. In this location, the Earth summit, the first Earth summit will happen. Earth summit means all the countries represented. Okay, all the countries, the representatives from all the countries attended this summit okay a large gathering of representatives from different countries come and sign in particular agreement or uh, rules okay that are being framed by a particular organization to conserve the ecosystems and uh, biodiversity okay that was happened in 1992 rio de janeiro summit okay next you can find visuals in the google also about earth summit how is but how it was happened you can find in the Google, you can find in the YouTube also, the Earth Summit videos, you can find 1992 Earth Summit videos, you can find. Okay, so coming to uh, the second, one more uh, like, okay, one more conservation effort is the World Summit on Sustainable Development. Okay, the World Summit on Sustainable sustainable development okay so what is this sustainable development okay first i'll tell you when it was happened okay uh, johannesburg south africa johannesburg south africa 2002 2002 okay so first i'll tell you what is mean by the sustainable development our ancestors, coming to our ancestors, they have a lot of technology. You go to 5,000 years back, okay, 5,000, 10,000 years back, our ancestors were having incredible technology, science and technology they have, okay. But without damaging environment, without causing any kind of harm to environment, they develop all the science and technology, okay. Point number one. Next, coming to ourselves. We are also developing the science and technology, right? You are sitting in your home, I'm also in, in my home, but we can able to communicate together and I'm teaching you, you are attending with your this is because of technology that we are utilizing. Okay. We are developing the science and technology, but in between, we are definitely somehow, some extent. We are damaging the environment. Okay. So, using the natural resources in a proper way for us develop for our development, that is sustainable development. That is nothing but sustainable development. Okay. If we are developing, but by damaging the environment, that is not sustainable development. We are damaging the environment. Okay, that is not sustainable development. So we need to develop those methods of 
sustainable development there. Okay, so for that, to understand what is sustainable development and what are the different methods of sustainable development, there was world summit was happened in the year of 2002 in the Johannesburg that is located in the South Africa. Okay, so these are the two important. Uh, Okay. Important international efforts. Efforts. What means our work towards protecting environment? Okay. So till now, we have studied about in this class, we have studied about conservation of biodiversity. First, the reasons for the conservation of biodiversity, and coming to the conservation methods, inside you conservation, inside you conservation, inside you conservation examples, inside you conservation examples. And inside the conservation examples, each and every one further discussion we have done. Each example also we have studied. Okay. And the coming to inside the conservation also I have explained all the reasons. Okay, uh, all the examples for inside the conservation also. Now, after that, I have told you what are the three hotspots which covers the India, like uh, indo burman area, indo burman regions, Himalayas, Himalayas. And also Western world, these three hotspots which covers the India, okay, these Himalayas, these indo burman areas, for the Western world. So, so these three areas are covering the uh, India, okay, three hotspots. And after that, international efforts. First one, Earth Summit, first one, second one, World Summit. Earth Summit was happened in Rio de Janeiro, 1992. World Summit was happened in Johannesburg, South Africa, 2002. So both are the conservation of biodiversity only. Okay. Conservation of biodiversity, sustainable use, sustainable. I told you what is sustainable use. Okay. Like without damaging environment, you are developing. Okay. That is sustainable development. And uh, coming to the sharing of uh, benefits of utilizing uh, the genetic resources. Okay. See, the gene bank is one of the best methods to preserve. You know, why? Because any uh, organisms who are facing the threat of extinction, we are collecting the genes from them. Okay, by scientific methods, we are collecting the genes and we are preserving and uh, raising them. Okay, and this was a very important method in case of XIV conservation when it comes to even cryopreservation, also as explained. Okay, so finally, the lesson is completed, the biodiversity and conservation chapter is completed. Even we tried to discuss very, very slowly, damn slowly, and repeat each and every topic uh, one more time. Each and every topic one more time, I repeat it, even though we have completed the, the chapter biodiversity and conservation chapter. Okay, so we still we have uh, some time. Okay, if you have any doubts, you can raise your hands about, uh, you can ask your questions about biodiversity conservation methods. You can raise your hands so that I can. End the meeting. Okay. Yeah, if you have any doubts, you can ask. Anybody having any doubts? Okay, so today's topic I'll summarize. I'll just summarize today's topics. Conservation of biodiversity. Methods, seasons, three types, narrow, utilitarian arguments, broad utilitarian arguments. Broad utilitarian arguments and further ethical arguments. Ethical arguments. Okay. So narrow utilitarian arguments means we are thinking about ourselves. As a human beings, we are thinking about ourselves. Okay. Like good, good. Firewood, good, 
construction material okay and industrial raw materials industrial raw materials and medicines okay so all human beings only needed this food wood fiber construction materials industrial raw materials and medicines this all are human beings okay as a human beings we are selfish we are thinking about our development so these are the sources that we require so this is called narrow thinking or narrow utilitarian arguments narrow utilitarian arguments okay so we need to conserve the biodiversity we need to conserve the biodiversity to get these sources so this thinking is nothing but narrow utilitarian thinking okay now coming to broad utilitarian arguments okay amazon rainforest is giving oxygen 20% to earth okay 20% of oxygen is given by amazon rainforest only to the earth okay next the forests are the sources for pollinations okay forests are the sources for pollinations so that comes under broad utilitarian utilitarian no that means what biodiversity is giving us not only for us okay for all the environment what biodiversity is giving for all the creatures okay so that is broad thinking the broad utilitarian argument okay and intrinsic values come under okay intrinsic values come under ethical arguments so this is reasons reasons for the conservation of biodiversity okay so this i have summarized here okay reasons for the conservation of biodiversity i have summarized now methods i will summarize hope you understood you can take the screenshot or you can remember thanks methods inside the conservation inside the conservation inside the inside you conservation okay so coming to inside you conservation uh, what are coming under inside you conservation generally i have already told you right national parks national parks sanctuaries sanctuaries national parks and uh, sanctuaries biosphere reserves biosphere reserves biosphere reserves okay and cultural landscapes cultural landscapes okay so protecting them is nothing but uh, inside the conservation within their habitat itself we are protecting the wildlife stuff. That is called inside conservation. Okay. And uh, coming to inside conservation, gene banks, okay. cryo preservation, cryo preservation, and geology and modeling, geological parks, and botanical gardens. Botanical. Models. Okay. So these all are coming under exciting conservation. So this is classification about national parks and sanctuaries and biosphere reserves. Again, in detail I have explained it. About national parks, sanctuaries, biosphere reserves, in detail I have explained. Okay. So this is all about conservation of biodiversity. And if you still have any kind of doubts, please raise your hand so that I can clarify your doubts. Please don't try to disturb my class to anybody and tell me. If you try to disturb my class, don't attend my class. Or else if you attend and disturb my class, I will remove without any thinking. And the same video is being recorded in the online. And I'm saving to my laptop even. I can send to your parents. Okay. Same admission number I'll find out. I'll send to your parents. Okay. This is fine. I'm saving each and every video of my class. So if anybody wants to disturb my class, definitely that video is being recorded. I'm sending that video. I will edit that video and particular video and send to your parents. Okay. 
and find your admission number to your name. Okay, it is not a difficult task for me to find your name. Okay, because your admission number is displaying. Okay, but suppose if you want to put any other admission number instead of you, they will be in trouble. Okay, so it's up to you. Right? Definitely, the admission number will be in trouble. Please, if you try to blame others, you will be in a trouble later. Okay, so please be careful. If you attend my class, just stay silent and listen my class and utilize my sharing of my knowledge. Okay. Or else, if you want to disturb, I will remove your okay name or you, uh, I will remove you as a participant from my class. Okay. Thank you. If you have any doubts, please ask. Let us be very decent. It is online platform. It is not our offline class, direct class. Direct class means the reading is different. This is online class, so please let us be decent. Okay. Now, why shall I please tell me? The portions for the weekend, sir. This chapter you study. The whole thing, sir. Yeah, total chapter you study. Okay, sir. Thank you. Still, anybody have doubts? Anybody? No doubt. Okay, I'm ending the meeting.